Well, close one. Even the first set, I think I was definitely uh, close to win it. But uh, there, I think I was not playing my best tennis. Uh, maybe too slow for her. She was more aggressive. And then somehow I changed a little bit all of this in the second set. And I started to serve much better. And uh, after the match was open, but obviously, like all sets were super close. And I mean, she's tough. We never really played. We just played one match. Um, yeah, so tough match. OK, thank you. Questions? Court? Congratulations on the Thank win. Um, it seemed like it was a very physical win for you. You had to work pretty hard out there, and I saw Jez uh, Green in your box. Um, just talk about the amount of work. Do you feel like this type of match is precisely what that training block was kind of built for in terms of being able to get you to get that win? Yeah, for sure. And lately, I think I had many of matches like this, and I always played a lot of three setters somehow in my life. I just don't know how to do it in two. Um, and uh, yeah, but I felt great. So the physical part that somehow for me now, at least I don't have to worry about that, which is always, you know, big plus at least, like because you worry sometimes about too many things, you know, like what to play, what the opponent is playing, then and then if you still have to worry if you can actually like hold the lever for like three hours. So this I don't have to worry about, which is uh, which is great. And I think I was moving really well. Um, I think I could really be much more aggressive in the first set, but somehow, yeah, it was um, yeah not really there uh, today. I think I was playing a bit faster the last two matches than I was today. But anyway, I just found a way, and um, I could play actually longer. I think the physical and also the conditions they were not you know like tough. I think the first round was much more tougher for me to just some, somehow survive than than this one. David, go ahead. Hi, Kaya, David Kane, Tennis.com. It seemed like you were willing to play a lot of defense late in that third set. Were you impressed at how well you were holding up physically and, and how well the defense was paying off, quite frankly? Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes you just have to use like all kind of games which you have, which this is not really like my game uh, to play defense. But sometimes I think she really played well, especially from the back end. So she was playing deep. So there was not much I could actually do about that. But of course, still, I want to attack. But I just had the feeling that uh, I was winning most of the long rallies, and especially if I went a little bit more to her forehand, you know, so and I was just like waiting, not waiting for a mistake, but still trying to be aggressive, but not really like overplaying it. Um, so, yeah, and I was feeling like physically, as I said, I was feeling fine, but it was not like planned that I just want to play long rallies and just like to defend, you know, but somehow the match was like that. And then, of course, like in the third set, it was a bit like nervous. We were both like losing serves a bit. And um, yeah, it was a bit like close. And yeah, so, I mean, maybe I just played a little bit more like passive than I would sometimes play. But um, yeah, that's how it was. <laughs> Just follow up. Um, I know you wish you would have been able to play more matches this year, but does a win like this over a player like Belinda maybe count for two matches, two, three matches, the way that you were able to play against someone that good? No, honestly, I don't. I don't really like count, you know, matches and like victories and losses. Of course, like you know, like this kind of matches helps you to feel better. And then, of course, like if you overcome some of these situations, like you somehow like, just just become stronger and you feel more confident. So that's how it is. There is no secret to this. And I think lately in this summer, I was just trying to you know like find my game back, and I think it's actually there. So I'm playing. Now I can say I play, I think, the best tennis I was playing um, this year so far. There was not much of <laughs> good tennis for me. and uh, But anyway, so I'm just happy with my level. And of course, I think matches like this can only help. Hi, Caroline. Uh, I'm Hi. Simon Briggs, Daily Telegraph. Um, Victoria Azarenka came in here earlier, and she raised subject away from the matches. She was talking about, I think it was inspired by the Fiona Ferro case. She was talking about coaches and players and how the tour is concerned that some coaches are um, manipulative or exploit their young players and she was saying the tour needs to do more about it. I just wonder, because you've been on the tour for a long time, whether it was something that you uh, ever sort of talk about with your team, something you, um, you see around the game and whether you agree with her that the tour needs to do more to protect uh, oh, players. Sorry, just didn't get it. What is the problem? What are the coaches doing wrong? Well. It, there's coaches, she said, that are manipulating players and taking advantage of young players. I think she was inspired by the story that came out about Fiona okay. Ferro, the, uh, the French okay, player this week. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, I didn't hear any story about Fiona Ferro, so I don't know uh, what is going on. And I don't know what is... Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't think there is a problem in this. I don't think the tour can, I mean, actually do something about this. I think it's about the players, you know. Of course, some of them, they are super young, so they... 
like maybe don't have many choices, but they still have parents. And I think they have enough people around themselves to somehow like handle these kind of situations. And I think there is what the tour can do. I don't think they can, you know, they cannot just go like inside. This is like a team thing. This is almost like a family. So they cannot just go there and just like say, okay, you are too much. Like, you know, how can you, I, I don't think there is a way. And I don't think somebody should like speak in it. But um, maybe, like, of course, to have somebody who can help in case you feel, you know, like you just need to speak about some things. I think there is actually there is at every tournament, I think now some like mental coach or somebody I think there is. But I think this was always like here. And of course, some of the coaches, maybe they take it like a little bit more seriously. Maybe, you know, like, I don't know, many there is many relationships also between players and coaches, but this it's like that. So I don't. I actually I don't know what I think about this. So, sorry. <laughs> sorry to put it to you, but it's an interesting subject. Yeah. Okay. So one more in English. Just on a follow up to that, I know it's it's a very difficult issue, but with the WTA, do you not feel like they have kind of a responsibility to to kind of maybe do more because. So people like Pam Shriver's talk spoken out about her experience, however many decades ago, and and spoken about how maybe not that much has been done since. I just wondered your thoughts on that. I don't have the feeling, but maybe this is my feeling because, um, you know, I never had this kind of issue and I'm a person which I always like take everything super professional. So with my coach, with, you know, like my physio, I have my team, I changed plenty of coaches and I always had like just professional. And if I would think, okay, he's maybe too much uh, speaking about my private life or maybe he's like too much in this, then for me, this is over or I speak to him, but this is me. So this, this is how I handle things. But of course, I understand that not all the girls are like this or maybe just they are too young, you know, but I think you have to maybe like speak to your parents or speak to some managers or I don't know if like WTA can really do something about this if they don't know much or they don't know what is going on. They don't know if actually the players, they need help or not. So I don't think this is like their problem. I think this is problem of the coach and the player, you know, and then the people like who are like around the player. So, yeah. Court, last question. Sorry, Gaia. Uh, just looking ahead and playing Vika uh, on the tennis court. <laughs> Um, just uh, can you talk about just the challenge of playing her and what it'll be like? I mean, two former champions, or former finalists, sorry, here in New York uh, facing off fairly early in a tournament. Yeah, challenging for sure. We didn't play for a couple of years, I think. Uh, of course, we had many, many matches. You know, I don't remember actually the last one. It maybe was somewhere in Rome or something like that. I think somewhere on clay, but it could be like two, three years since we played last match. But I mean, obviously I had some great matches against her in Brisbane. I remember, I don't actually know if we met on Grand Slam yet, but I don't think so. But anyway, she's a, you know, like great player. Of course, like she has, you know, like many up and downs also in her career, but I think she's like super stable at the moment. She's kind of like, you know, like not really like winning titles, but also she never kind of lose early in the tournament. So I think she's, and especially on hard courts, I think she's, of course, she's the strongest. So um, yeah, I think similar, I have to be aggressive because if she is, then, you know, I don't want to run. <laughs> And um, the serve's gonna be the key. I know she can sometimes serve well, sometimes not so great. So, I mean, I need to take advantage of that. And I think it's actually similar matchup to with Benchic because also like both much better backends. So yeah, the tactic is gonna be similar.